Hello everybody, whether you're a geek, a nerd, or even the slight chance, you're possibly even a human. Welcome to the lab. And today's tutorial is what you might call part B of a tutorial. For today, we are going to be looking at, well, what is basically on the screen. It's a VIC-20, but we're going to be looking at a modern storage solution for the venerable old VIC-20. Now, I've already done this tutorial for the Commodore 64. If you want to see that tutorial, if you've got a Commodore 64, you're just uh, inquisitive. Uh, I've put a link here, and you can go check that out. That opens a new window, and you can come back to this one if you wish. Now, first of all, before we discuss the new solution, let's look at the old discussions. For because those of you who have owned, or presently own, or want one of these, may or may not know, but probably may know, that one of the downfalls is storage because there are three solutions available to you as a VIC-20 owner as standard that come from the 80s. First one is what was most popular in Europe and the United Kingdom, the data set, yes, running at, I do believe, 300 board. This was slow and Although the deck itself was reliable, the loading process wasn't. And just yesterday I was trying to load off this and it took me three attempts. So that could be annoying and it could take up to 10 minutes to load a game. The second solution available to you, and still available to you, is the 1541 floppy drive. This takes five and a half inch discs. Uh, it's still slow. You've still got to get the discs. The discs have to be working, and the drive have to be working, which this one, at present, is not. So that's the second solution available. The third solution, the best solution, was cartridge. Do -do 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 -do. And here we have Gorfon cartridge. These are huge cartridges, and that one's open on the side for some reason. I'm going to click it back home. Uh, these go at the back, and switch on, and instantly come on. A good solution, very good, but if you're modern, collector and you don't want to spend a fortune or have the storage space to get all of these and want to try out games or just collect them all without getting these then there is a modern solution to the rescue comes the SD to IEC now in the Commodore 64 tutorial I did say that wrong I did say SD to IDE so this is the SD2SEC. Did I just say that right the first time? Anyway, it's the SD2SEC. And what this basically is, uh, you put your SD card in there. You've got two buttons. We'll have a look more at this uh, once we've looked at setting the software up. And it connects into the back of the VIC-20 and asks, acts as a much faster floppy drive. So you can load games in. And obviously on this you can store hundreds of games and load them off, load them up off uh, menu systems. So first of all, what we're going to do is look at how we set up the software on the SD card. To do this, obviously you'll need your SD card in your PC, Mac, or laptop, whatever it is you use. So let's go downstairs and look at that, shall we? Right, here we are downstairs with the laptop and what we're after, we're after the file browser for the VIC-20. Now you need to go to this site, there'll be a link below, www.vic20.it forward slash cvm file browser forward slash. And you should see cvm file browser version 1.5, unless you're doing this in the future and it may have changed. Ooh. Anyway, if you go down to the bottom of the page, this is what you're after. CBM file browser version 1.5, so just click on that. And then on the right there, open. And mine is opening on WinRAR. So you're going to need some sort of unzipping stuff to do this. So, anyway, let's have a look. If we go into programs, and then you look down, you will see these. You've got fb20.prg, which is for the unexpanded VIC, then fb20-3k-8k. 
Those are the ones you need, but the Vic won't like them named like that. So what you need to do is get rid of the .prg. And for these, get rid of the PRG, and I suggest, uh, well, what I've done for mine is FB23, so that's FB23K, okay. Three, there we go. All right, okay, we're messing me around. There we go. And the 8K version as well there. So we just make that FB20K, FB28. And there we go. And what you need to do now is highlight those three do, 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 and drag them across to your SD card, which I assume you've already opened because you're good like that. And you can see on mine they're already done, they're already across there FB20, FB23 and FB28. These others are to do with the Commodore 64 as I have this card set up for both systems. Now what you can do is set up another folder called Vic Games. Uh, don't use any capitals because the Vic will replace them with other characters and it looks a mess. And into that folder drag in your games. Now I've left this one with the capitals here to show you what happens on the screen of the Vic when you do that. But all the others are in lowercase and any long names I've just simplified because I think they can take up to eight letters on the file names. Uh, files you need to drag in uh, .prgs and that's about it for the Vic. You can drag in disk images but there aren't many disk images to the Vic so mainly that isn't to worry about. Uh, you can get these images from wherever you get them from, from your discs, from tape images or off the internet. Uh, I do believe there is a program under development, as at the time of recording, to transfer tape images into program images. Once it's finished I shall put a link up here so you can get that. Now for those who've done the Commodore 64, do not worry about SJ load, you do not need that on the VIC. So for the VIC, that's it. Uh, that's the card set up. We'll now take that back out and take it up and put it into the machine. I'll show you how to set up the hardware. I'll be right back. Right, you are not seeing things. Before you is the back end of the VIC-20. There is a reason for this. I'm going to show you how to set up this kit. But uh, first of all, what you need to do is grab hold of your SD2. Yeah. IEC. I always find it's hard to remember for some reason. And um, in the front there you'll find a cartridge slot. By the way, this is the older model. This was given to me by Mark Fixy Stuff, who now has the new model, which looks like a 1541 drive. Uh, it's about half the size of this. In fact, it's the size of the PCB in there. So it's got a new case and uh, new ports. But what uh, anyway, do is click it home in there. And you've got two ports. This goes into the VIX serial port and this goes into the VIX cassette port for power. There is a little notch in there which matches up to the cassette port so you can't get it in the wrong way. So what we do, plug this one into the serial port, plug this one into the cassette port, make sure you've got the right way around. Well, mine lettering is at the top and then we're ready to rumble. So all I'll do is plug the rest of the Vic back in and we'll be back and we'll demonstrate it running. Okay we're back and the Vic is set up and now we can go to the screen and see how this thing works. So with the Vic booted remember that if uh, it's set up by default for the unexpanded VIC-20 so you're going to have to lo load different uh, file browsers depending on what size of game you need you're using and remember you still need to put the memory expansion in if you're using it with anything larger than the normal games so for the normal games we type in load unlike the Commodore 64 we're not using SJ load here doesn't need it and I 
renamed my normal basic file browser as FB20. Come here, 8, which is device number, comma 1, which I can't remember why I do that. But there we go. So it's now searching and it's loaded. So we just type run and slowly but surely up comes the menu system. And there we can see the root of the SD card. Uh, the Commodore 64 games there and the VIC-20 games. So if you go down to VIC-20 games, there we go. And you can see there on the 3D maze that we didn't use lowercase so it's replaced them with other characters. But the rest of them work fine. So we can now go up and down, choose a game and play it. So, what shall we play? Let's play Grid Renard. So we go down using the arrow keys, the cursor keys. Shift and cursor will send you back up. Cursor on its own will send you down. So Grid Runner, return. And it's now loading the lights run on the drive. So it is loading. And there we go. Grid Runner. And it's that simple. There we go, and your game is loaded. If you want to load another game, just switch the machine off, give it 10 seconds, and switch it back on. Something I have forgotten to uh, tell you about as well, there are also, in case, you also have a disc flip button on here, which allows you to select the second disc if it's a multi-disc game, but there are not many disc images for the VIC at all, so this, you're probably never gonna come across that. And a reset button in case of problems, you can just reset it there. But that's it, that's how simple it is to use. So, uh, please rate, comment and subscribe. And yes, leave any comment down below you feel necessary. And any issues, and if there are any issues, we'll see if we can come up with solutions and uh, cover them in future videos. And just to remind you, this is supplied very kindly by Mark fixes stuff, so go and check out his channel. He does repair Sinclair's, but on this occasion, I'll forgive him for that. Uh, and check out the website from whence this came. Link below also. Thank you all very much. You need to quit being dirty. You're a dirty boy. <laughs>